Hello everybody, this is Svenshin and welcome back to more Mighty Morphin Power Rangers for the SNES. The last Power Ranger that we haven't used is Kimberly, the Pink Ranger. I kind of saved her for last, uh, not really any particular reason. And this is a cave stage. Alright, so, uh, let's get this over with. Um, again, there are putties that you can kill in one hit. And there are some that you can't kill in one hit, uh, like the dark red ones. I think those are the ones that can throw the knives, I'm not entirely sure. Once again, she has the ducking attacks. She actually runs pretty fast, so she's actually not bad as a ranger, for being a girl anyway. She was also the uh, most attractive character on the show, which is, I guess, what most most people remember her for. And that was a sick dodge, by the way. You know, elite skills, like I could, I could go to any Power Ranger tournament and beat the shit out of everyone. I'm pretty sure. I'm just kidding, I'd probably suck. And this music reminds me of um, Top Gear, one of the best racing games on the Super Nintendo, actually. Uh, certainly one of the most iconic ones. I might actually do a spotlight of that. I'm not going to do a Let's Play of it, because racing games I, I don't think are very suited for Let's Playing. Uh, at least, you know, I couldn't really do it. I guess they can work if you do with them co-op, but... Uh, Top Gear was a really, really... Hey, don't start whacking me with swords, I'm unarmed! I'm a girl in a dress, and I'm unarmed. Although she can kick really high. They give you meat. I don't know why, because this part of the stage was really easy. I got hit exactly once. If you if you can switch your attacks like with uh, ducking and regular attacks, and it will it will help you hit the enemies more. You can also spam the flying kicks. But generally it's not a very good idea. I guess if you want to be really cheap, the um, down attacks are always the fastest because uh, they cause the least delay on your attacks. And it's also easier to not get hit by the enemies, but, you know, that's a little bit boring to watch. So I try to make it at least a little bit interesting to watch. This game is simple enough as it is, you know, it's certainly no double dragon or anything. Speaking of which, I still want to do a Let's Play of Super Double Dragon for the uh, SNES, but I think that it's a that's a game that's more fun if you do it in co-op, so... Uh, let's Mighty Morph into the Mighty Pterodactyl. And there's an enemy with a sword that wants to kill us. Now, if you remember, uh, Kimberly on the show used a bow. And this game pissed me off. Because what she's doing, that's not how you use a bow. You know, I've, I've shot a bow and that's not how you do it. You don't just whack it, you'll break the thing. Anyway, uh, she has an overhead attack that shoots arrows. So she's the only ranger with kind of a really unique attack. Unfortunately, it does pretty much no damage. So the only enemies it's even remotely useful against is those guys that die in one hit anyway. With every other enemy, it's literally useless. Now, because you can kill them faster with any other form of attack, so... I'm not sure if you can kill those. No, apparently not. You can kick them, I think, but... So I guess you could if you wanted to... Uh, kill the enemies that die in one hit with the uh, bow anyway, but It's generally not worth your trouble, but at least they tried something new What's interesting though uh, I said that in the show at least Kimberly was always wearing a skirt in her ranger form and obviously she's not here In fact, she's looking quite butch broad-chested thick-armed well-defined muscles, I guess uh, She just hits the gym before she morphs into the power ranger form Anyway, um, now that we're doing another easy stage, let's just talk a little bit more about the show. So I already said that I watched only the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers part, although I did watch all the uh, sub-shows within that. I think, well, not all of them, I think most of them. Um, there was the first show with the Mega... The, the normal Megazord, I think it was called, in which all the Rangers just used their normal power. So it was for uh, the Pterodactyl for Kimberly, the Mastodon for of the or the Malith, Malith, Mammoth, Woolly Mammoth. Uh, kind of a tongue twister there. Woolly Mammoth for uh, Zack, the Tyrannosaurus for Jason, Triceratops for Billy, then the Sabertooth Tiger for Trini. And then at some point, I think those Zords got destroyed and they tried to do something different. And what they did was they gave, they pretty much gave everyone uh, new Zords. And I think they call it the Mega Thunderzord, I'm not entirely sure. Where there was uh, 
those animals were based on the Chinese legendary zodiac, I think. There was a red dragon, kind of like an oriental dragon. Uh, there was a lion or a kirin, I think. Uh, a phoenix. And probably some kind of falcon or something, I don't know. And then after that, they got destroyed again, and they got another power-up. And after the Mega Thunder Zord, I believe... Oh, there was also, of course, the White Ranger with the Tiger Zord. That was my favorite. After the Mega Thunder Zord, I think they became the Ninja Zords. I don't even know. I, I quickly lost track of what they were trying to do. But I think after the Mega Thunder Zord came the Mega Ninja Zords, or the Ninja Mega Zords. And after that, they created the Shogun Mega Zords. They just went bonkers with it. Okay, there's one thing that I do want to mention about the later stages, and that's enemies will start being much more aggressive, so... I guess you could call this... slightly difficult. So I do have to be careful that I don't get hit too much. But it's not really a huge challenge, it's just that the, um, the putties will start, especially the jumping ones, the green ones, they'll become much more aggressive, so... I'm guessing that's kind of like a guard camera or something. You can just kill it in a single hit, so no problem. But yeah, after the Power Rangers got the Ninja Megazords or whatever they were, I very quickly lost track, and I lost interest, so... But, you know, at least they tried to keep it interesting. But I think that sort of show makes more sense for a Japanese audience because Japanese television is incomprehensible to begin with. So it, it's pro it probably makes sense to the Japanese, everything that goes on. Not so much for an American audience. Uh, but it was still fun while it lasted, you know? I had I had a blast watching the Power Rangers. And this game... I don't know, it didn't really make me feel like a Power Ranger per se, but... Oh yeah, uh, this stage has a gimmick where after every once in a while it'll shoot a, a laser at you. And you'll get a huge alarm and a huge warning that the laser is imminent. Uh, but it's really easy to avoid. Now, the good thing is, uh, the laser uh, will basically kill all the enemies for you, and so that's good. And then at the very end of the stage, that's basically where it is. And then you kind of have to destroy it yourself. You can do it when you're ducking, so... Just a few good whacks with your bow, however little sense that makes, will destroy it, so... And I'm guessing now we're almost at the end of it, so... Uh, basically, there's just a few enemies ahead here that we have to kill. Let's just uh, avoid the lasers here. I think this is the last screen. I'm kind of annoyed that we're not getting any healing items, because the next boss might actually be a little bit annoying. I am saving my bomb for it, though, so... So now we're at the final normal boss in the game in a sort of data center computer, kind of like a ninja, wearing a short sword. He, he will jump around a lot, and he'll always teleport after you hit him. And every time he teleports, he'll basically try to go behind you. Although every once in a while, he will start, like, jumping around and... He's, he's annoying. He's one of the most annoying bosses. But he's not that tricky. Um, after a while, uh, he will start trying to do rolling attacks, and he'll generally start using different kinds of attacks against you. He'll also appear closer to you, so it'll make it easier for you to hit him. So actually, he's supposed to be a really annoying boss with all of his teleports, but he actually ends up being very easy, because he can interrupt all of his attacks. So now he has his um, chain with a, with a scythe, I guess, and then he takes out his sword again. You can interrupt literally all of his attacks. Anyway, uh, we'll let him transform once again. I'll go for one more combo. And now, time for the bomb! I'm not exactly sure what that is, but... He's still not dead? Wow, he has a lot of health. He should be pretty much dead. I mean, I've been hitting him for a century or something like that. Okay, he's dead! My commentary got really crappy there, sorry for that. I've been recording all of this in a row, so... Anyway... Uh, this was the last human stage. After you beat this, the game gives you a very special surprise. So instead of going to the character select screen, I'm going to end the episode here. And I'll see you in the next one, which is going to be the finale of this little 
uh, side LP that I'm doing. 